Dynamo streams are an awesome feature of DynamoDB where anytime a record changes in your database, you can stream that event out to a listener. Using Dynamo streams is a key part of an event-driven architecture. Instead of having in your code to do a write to database and then trigger these other events, you can just write to Dynamo and that will then trigger an event which will can trigger the other lambdas. Using Dynamo streams is better than calling both services because if you happen to write to Dynamo and that succeeds, but then when you try and call the other services, there is an error, you're now left in kind of an unstable state where the Dynamo table thinks that those records have been processed, but inside those services, there's been a failure. This could show itself as a record being shipped as delivered in your database, but the customer has never received that delivered email with Dynamo streams. If that same process had happened, you write the Dynamo da database that streams an event to the service. And if that service fails, you can have a dead letter queue, which is where all events that haven't been processed end up and can then be processed again once you've managed to fix the underlying service. So let's jump onto the computer and we can see how we can set up streams with Dynamo as well as an event listener which is triggering a Lambda. To show off how easy it is to set up Dynamo streaming, I've created a new repo and this is a simple repo using the serverless node TypeScript template. And the only changes I've made are to in here, in the functions, I have my own set of functions, which is just a single function that calls set data. That function, all it does is it takes the body and writes it to a DynamoDB table. That DynamoDB table, if we go back to our serverless.ts, comes in the resources. And if we go and have a look in our Dynamo resources, at the moment, this is just a single DynamoDB table with an attribute of ID and it is pay per request. This whole repo is also going to be available on GitHub. So I'll link that below. Now that we've got all of this, I have actually already deployed it. So if I open up my terminal and run SLS info, this will get me the API endpoint that we need to hit. There we go. So there is a post endpoint of this. And actually I've already set this up inside Postman. And now Postman, we just paste in our URL, set this to be a post request, set a body of raw and set it to JSON. And I'm just gonna post up my name and a fake job. And if I hit send, we're gonna get back message data, message of data is saved, and then the ID. If we jump across into our AWS account, go to Dynamo and Tables. Here we can see my streaming table, which is what I called it. And in here, if we just close this side, we can look inside Exports and Streams. And at the moment, Dynamo DB Streams are disabled. And if we explore the items, we can see that we have two single items because I did test this before starting the video and it's just with my name and a job. Obviously nothing has happened on the back of this. So let's go back into our code and now we can add a second Lambda that listens to these Dynamo streams. So the first thing we want to do is go back up and find our Dynamo resources. And we want to actually add the ability to stream out from this Dynamo table. So at the bottom of here, we can set our stream specification. And the only thing we need in here is a stream view type. And there are a couple of different options for this, 
from new image, which will only give you the new version of a record once it's been updated. Old image, which is the opposite. So if you do an update to a record, you'll only get what it was before the update. And finally, new and old, as well as a couple of others, but new and old will give you both the new data and the old data. So we're gonna go with that. So it's new and old images. And now we have saved that, we have the stream. Now what we need to do is create a function that listens to this stream. So make sure that you know what your table reference is. So in my case, it is my table, as we'll be needing that in a second. Back inside our functions, we can add a second function. I'm gonna call this listen to stream. This is obviously gonna have a handler and I'm gonna set that for now to source slash functions slash listen to stream forward slash index dot handler. And now in the events, instead of there being an event for HTTP API, which is API gateway, we're gonna have a stream event. This stream event is gonna have a type of DynamoDB because it is a DynamoDB stream. We're gonna have an ARN. And here we need to put the ARN of the Dynamo stream. At the moment, we don't actually know it, but what we can do is we can use some clever cloud formation to reference the ARN. We do that by saying fn get attribute and the attribute we're getting is we're going to get it from the my table and we want to get the stream a r n now that we have this we've set it up so that every event will be that happens on that dynamo db table stream will be triggering this listen to stream lambda there are some other things that we can add to this config. So for example, we can set a filter patterns. And this is basically an array of events that we want to filter for. So the event name that we want to filter on, this is an array and can have examples like remove. So what this will do is it will make sure that the events that trigger this lambda are filtered so that the event name is remove. This is really good if, for example, you only want to see when a record is deleted. And there are other event names that you can filter on and you can make this as complicated as you want. For now, I'm going to delete this, but I will leave a link below to the documentation around all of the different filter patterns. If we now save this, we actually have to create our Lambda. So in functions, I'm gonna create a new folder called listen to stream and an index.ts in here. I'm gonna start by opening up the set data, copying all of the code in here and pasting it in to start out. And then we're gonna modify it from there. The first thing that we want to change is the event is now not an API gateway proxy event but this is a DynamoDB stream event. And in here, we can actually import this from AWS Lambda instead of the proxy event. Now that we've got the event coming in as the correct type, I'm gonna delete everything in this try section as well as the return inside the error and just put a simple return inside here. Now we've got this. Inside here, what we want to do is basically map over all of the different records inside the event because the way the stream works, it can pass more than one event to a Lambda. So what we want to do is event.records.map and that is going to be a record. And in here, we're just going to console.log record and finally, 
hit return. So obviously you could add as much custom logic into here as you would like. Now we just need to clear up our imports and save that file. And now we are ready to deploy again. Now I can open up my terminal and run SLS deploy one more time to deploy this new Lambda as well as the streams on our DynamoDB table. Now that that has finished deploying, we can first check if we go into our AWS console and to Dynamo. If we go to the DynamoDB and the tables, have a look at my streaming table. And now if we look in exports and streams, we can see that DynamoDB streams is enabled. The view type is new and old images. And that triggers one Lambda function, the YouTube dev listen to stream Lambda. At the moment, there are no records processed, but if we make a change to the table, that should process and trigger that Lambda. So if we go back into Postman, I'm gonna change this from Sam to Jess, and Jess's job is going to be dev ops master. And if I hit send on this now, obviously the data has been saved into DynamoDB with a new ID. We can see that if we go in here and go to explore items, we will see if we refresh this page that there is a new ID, DevOps master and Jess. The interesting thing is if we go into Lambda and we actually find our new function. So if I change this to last modifi modified, find our list to stream. In here, if we go under monitoring and view in CloudWatch logs, we'll be able to see what was logged out inside this Lambda. In here, we can see that we have one console log and in here we have the event ID, the DynamoDB data, and it has a new image of ID, job, and name. What you could do is you could change that console log inside there to do a JSON stringify. This would mean that you could actually see the data inside of here, but at the moment it is stored as an object, but we can see that we have actually triggered our Lambda. We can see that this was triggered at, let's see the time, 1801. What we can also do is go back into DynamoDB and in here, find our tables, streaming table, explore items, click on one of the SAM records and in here we can actions delete items. Well, when we delete this item, if we go back into CloudWatch, we can refresh this and see if we get a new one. So now that we can see, we have been triggered with a second event. And in this one, we can see that we have an old image, but there is no new image. That's because when you delete something, there isn't a new version. And if we look at the original one, we can see that this has a new image because we created a record, but obviously there is no old record as we didn't update it. In this video, we have learned about Dynamo streams and how we can set them up in DynamoDB to trigger a Lambda function. You can go really advanced on this with the filters, or you can keep it nice and generic, so every Dynamo change triggers the Lambda. This flexibility and control allows you to build really specific Lambdas or more generic Lambda functions to handle different kinds of events. The keen among you may have noticed that actually my desk at the moment is completely empty. And that's because as of today, we're setting off on our first van trip where I'll be working remotely from the van whilst also traveling and rock climbing around Europe. If you're interested in finding out more about that kind of side of the complete coding, then check out my Instagram, which I'll link in the description below. On Instagram, I'll be sharing more around what it's like to work remotely living out of a van, 
and also some nice photos of the kinds of places we're visiting. If you have liked this video, first give it a like as it really helps share this video to more developers just like yourselves. But also check out this video here where we talk about how to set up a WebSocket API.